Unsurance is not knowing if you have coverage when you move your washing machine that shifts the hose, that floods the bathroom, that drops your tub through the ceiling, that lands on your mahogany hutch. TD Insurance is confidence your coverage fits your needs. Avoid insurance and get a quote at tdinsurance.com. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is April 11th, 2017. Gold, a little bit of a breakout today on, I guess you would say, international geopolitical worries. It's up right around the 1272 mark. Actually, now it's down to 1271. It's up 1590 the ounce or 1.27 percent. Silver, 1824 the ounce, up 31 cents. So both of them had pretty good moves today. Will they stick or will they be eroded quickly? Good question. For which we've got Chris Vermeulen, thegoldenoilguy.com. Chris, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Kerry. Always, Chris, always. So we've seen uh, gold try to break out a number of times, kind of go above that 1260 resistance level, and only to get blown away like the next day and go back into the 1250s or high 1240s. What's your feeling now? Is this the magic moment or do we have more to wait? Yeah, you know, it's a really good question. There's there's a lot of things kind of taking place in the market right now that's got stocks selling off and the safe havens like gold, silver and miners all kind of moving higher. And today is one of those kind of panic kind of days in the market. And the big question is, where is the where is gold going to close today? It's been up at this level uh, last week, a couple of days ago, it was at this level. And then by the end of the day, the last couple hours or last hour there, it sold right down and crashed to close below. So if it can close above that 1260, 1264 area right in there, uh, then you know we, we could see this pickup speed and, and some unwinding of shorts, which means we'll see gold pop and squeeze all the way from the 1272, which it's at now, all the way to 1300, 1306, which is the high we saw back more or less in uh, November or the beginning of, uh, uh, yeah, in November there. Yeah. So I think I think there's room for kind of, gold always has this pattern. I call it kind of like the hook. It uh, sells off and then kind of builds a little bit of a base or slowly grinds to the upside. And then it just starts to rally and run. And it's, it's kind of like a short squeeze. All the shorts are getting squeezed out. Everybody piles in. And we see, we see these big up days like today. We could see another big up day for one or two more days. And we just see it kind of go parabolic. And it'll run right up into resistance. 1,300 is not that far away. It's a whole number. It's a previous high. And everyone is chasing prices and fearful of the stock market. So when usually, I, that, and that's the hook. If you were to look at the chart, you know, that's the kind of the hook that goes up, gets everybody hooked, and then the market just crashes. And mm -hmm. you know how gold and silver are. They'll climb and climb and they'll create some amazing gains. And in one or two days, you have these massive precious metals, you know, red bars where it just completely drops straight down. There's no time to get out. You blink, uh, you know, the, the the loss has already been taken or the, the, the gain has been given back. So I think that's where we're at. I think we've got a few days of extreme kind of volatility and people reshuffling and in, in, in panic mode. And, uh, and then I think we'll see, you know, gold, you know, uh, kind of reverse and consolidate for a while here. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is the 30 day gain on gold. It's up five and a half percent just about. But the one year change, it's up one percent. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, right. So that tells you uh, the volatility has been uh, kind of uh, gut wrenching. So if you're playing the paper um, and you're not doing it right, you're gonna get burned. Yeah, so, for sure. So and silver is much the same case as as gold, right? Yeah, silver is silver's got uh, it. It kind of took a good wallop uh, the last couple of days. It really kind of sold down hard. It's having a nice recovery today. Uh, but I, I think the same thing will, will happen. We see this type of pattern in silver over and over again. We saw it back in November where we see kind of price pop up and then have a quick sharp drop. And then it rallies up to a nominal new high, which I think we can see this week uh, up to that uh, 1840 or 1850, potentially 1860 area. I think we could see it squeeze up there. And then I think we, we're going to see it uh, take a haircut along with gold gold and miners. And uh, I think we'll see a bottom in the equities market. So I think everything is kind of at a pretty 
critical pivot zone here. It's just the market likes to stretch and really shake out the longs and equities and to mm-hmm. get over the shorts out of precious metals. And then once everybody kind of gets squeezed out of their positions, <laughs> then the market reverses into yeah. that favor that everybody just got out of. <laughs> <laughs> well, as somebody said, the market always acts to frustrate the majority of, of participants. And I'm sure this will be no exception. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. So we're looking at the stock market. Uh, you think uh, it has a has a little bit of a pullback now and then goes higher in the future? Or are we at a turning point? Yeah, well, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I think there's there's still more sideways or downward price action in equities. It's trying to uh, uh, digest the recent gains that we saw uh, back in February. And, you know, we've got some cycles that are still working. We're still kind of in a downward cycle. And I think we've got some, some more headwinds to go. We could see another couple of weeks of choppiness. And ideally, I'd like to see the equities market have two or three or four more big down days where and and that would create the vix to have a huge spike we'd see the nyse kind of a volume ratio we'd see everybody panic selling and unloading shares and that would be kind of to me would be the perfect storm when the market flushes out and sells down we see panic selling we see the vix spike to a, a real big standout high the vix has had a huge pop in the last uh, uh really the last week it's gone from 1090 all all the way to almost $16 today. So a huge, huge gain. And I think it's got potential to spike all the way up to 20. So there's still another, you know, 30, 30 plus percent move that we could see the VIX spike. And ideally, if the VIX can spike up to 20, that means the mm-hmm. stock market has another big sell off day or two ahead of us this week, potentially. And that, of course, means people are afraid. And when they're afraid, they put their money into safe places, which is bonds and uh, precious metals and miners. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this kind of extreme fear and everybody's just running for the safe places. And that's why we're seeing all the, the money kind of flow out of stocks and into the safe havens. And the VIX is a sign. When the VIX is high, it's time to buy and uh, equities, that is. And when the VIX is high, usually it also means money is flowing into gold because it's uh, fearful. And the thing is, the VIX always falls back down. Uh, and that means we're going to see the market reverse, I think, in the near future. But there could be some more pain for equities and there could be some more gains for precious metals uh, in the next few days. Interesting. Interesting. So and then bonds, uh, you're thinking uh, they're going to spike, obviously, because we're heading for the safe haven trade here due to the geopolitical tensions or whatever. Yeah, you know, bonds are building a really nice uh, bottoming formation. We kind of saw a significant low back in December. We had another significant low here in March. And uh, the market, bonds have recovered right back up to kind of the the recent highs. It looks like a giant, uh, when you zoom way out, it looks like almost like a giant uh, W formation or a stage one basing formation. So, you know, money is slowly accumulating and bonds are building from what looks to be a a very large base. And uh, I, I think this will continue to digest for a while. I think we're kind of in the mid stages. I think we're still several months away from bonds really breaking out and and potentially starting a big rally. Uh, I'm kind of expecting the equities market to become soft in the second half of the year. And once equities start to kind of break down and underperform, money will start flowing into these safe havens like bonds. And of course, I also think it's when precious metals will start to pick up speed in the second half of the year. So right now, gold and bonds, they're kind of, they're They're consolidating, they're building a base, they're getting their footing, and I don't think we see them really start to perform till, you know, the second half of this year. But they look very bullish long term, both gold and and bonds. It's just a matter of working through this consolidation phase because their bonds are out of favor, completely out of favor, and that's a good sign. And uh, because eventually they will become come into favor, and I think have significant uh, gains to the upside. Interesting. Interesting. So. Well, wow. so gold and bonds going up at the same time, unusual kind of probably the dollar. What's the dollar going to be doing? Yeah, well, the dollar has been under pressure. It had a nice strong rally in the last uh, few weeks here. And of course, it's come right up into resistance. It's come up to a uh, kind of a resistance trend line as well. And uh you know, gold, over, I mean, sorry, the dollar overall, you know, I think it's going to either trade sideways here or continue to pull back. So it's going to help uh, precious metals a little bit here. But I think there's a lot of fear overall about what's going on globally, what's going on with Trump, what's he going to do? You know, he hasn't been in action all that long and there's already been, you know, 
missile strikes and all these things. So I think in general, there's a lot of fear. That's that's which is one of the reasons why I think gold, physical gold is performing kind of better than, uh, you know, silver and miners is because it's kind of a an asset. It's a safe haven. And I think more more people when they're afraid, uh, general traders or investors that, you know, not active ones, I think they just go to what they know. So they buy physical gold, whether it's through an ETF or, or physical gold itself. But um, I think there's a lot of fear. And when that happens, money tends to roll into the safe havens. And I don't, I can't see interest rates going a whole lot higher. They may get squeezed a little bit, but overall, eventually interest rates are either going to flatline uh, later this year, or they're going to potentially start to go down. And of course, when they do, bonds are going to rally. And, um, you know, I think, I think we could see bonds and gold hold up fairly well together. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, the markets uh, never cease to amaze, do they? Yeah, it's always unique, that's for sure. Yeah, so then we're looking at oil and, you know, it had some action on the upside for obvious reasons. Now, where is it going to go? Yeah, crude oil had that big, big sell-off uh, earlier this year and kind of consolidated for about a month. And then it broke out to the upside above that 49 uh, level. And of course, it's had a strong run right up to 53, which is pretty much dead center of, of resistance zone. And now it's kind of hit that wall. And I think it's going to take some time for, for crude oil to digest this recent move. It's had a huge move up and it's into major resistance. If you go back to the weekly chart or the monthly chart, crude oil to me looks extremely bullish. Uh, right now, though, the way it's had this strong run into a significant resistance zone, I think crude oil is going to trade sideways and chop around here for a while. And the question is, is it going to form a, more of a topping phase or is it going to create a new launch pad and digest this move before it takes the next run to the $60, $61 per barrel mark? And I think that'll take a few mo a few weeks to unfold, if not uh, longer. Uh, but the grand scheme of things, crude oil looks uh, very bullish long term at this point. And, uh, you know, it just had a nice run. And right now it, it needs a breather. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating because the sentiment is for continued overproduction and continued uh, downward pressure on prices. And yet the, the technical chart is telling a completely different story. Yeah. And that's how that's how kind of news and fundamentals tend to work. Right. It's yeah. the news always. usually gets everyone on the wrong side. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's always darkest before dawn. So when nobody wants it and it's kind of being given away uh, and there's nothing but bad news, usually news has been factored into the price already. And uh, it's already looking ahead to what's going to happen next. So after a totally crappy market condition and nobody wants it. There's only one way to go from there, and I can't really see it getting a whole lot worse for crude oil. So uh, I think the you know the upside is 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 really good from this point. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's looking pretty good, and I think that uh, that invariably the news will be proven wrong. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> the the headlines are oh, increasing output from the Permian Basin and shale oil in the u.s and inability of opec to control output and you know invariably that will uh, that will prove wrong yeah and you know if you take a look at the xle like the energy sector etf it's been showing signs that we've put in a significant uh, bottom a few weeks ago and it's it's starting to outperform. It has it's it's on the verge of of having a, a big breakout and run. And typically, the the energy stocks will lead a move in um, in crude oil. And of course, crude oil has actually kind of led the move till now. But we're just starting to see energy stocks starting to break out, and they've had a lot of good relative strength. And I think I think that's a sign that there's more upside potential. Or it all, I think it also means that crude oil will hold up here as opposed to just reverse and, and fall back down. So the signs, the leading indicators here for crude oil are saying that crude oil is probably going to continue to trade, just grind its way slightly higher, trade sideways, uh, you know, at worst. And uh, and then eventually it's going to break out and have a run to the 60-61 area, which is a significant high that we saw. When was that? That was back in, um, uh, let's just see where that was. That was, that was way back there. 
That was back in 20, May 2015. So it's a pretty significant level. And uh, from where we are at $53 per barrel, that's that's a big percent gain. And I don't yeah. think a lot of people are expecting that. So No, no, the market's uh, going to be caught blindsided as usual. I'm sure of that. I've seen it too many times at this point in life to, uh, I just recognize it. It's a sucker play. Everybody's expectations, crude oil's going down and invariably it will go up. So, uh, so where do you put your money, uh, Chris, if you're like looking at the market now? Yeah, well, what's got me most excited, to be honest, at this point is the VIX, is uh, playing, uh, doing a play on the VIX. I really hope we see equities uh, take one more big nosedive or you know, this week. I'd love to see a couple big down days. I'd like to see the VIX go from 16, which it's at today, see it jump up to 20. Uh, there's some interesting ways to play it where you can short a leveraged VTX like the UV. X, Y. And the VIX fear is, is short lived. It's intense. It's powerful, but it's very short lived. Just when somebody jumps out and scares you and your heart skips a beat, it hurts. And it's, and it's like a shock to the system, but then boom, you fade away and you're all good, you know, moments later. And that's how the VIX works. It's that initial spook, that scare. And the VIX will typically, well, pretty much will always fade back down. So when it spikes really high, you short it and you hold on to it and it will, continue to drop. And of course, there's huge. You can have a 50% drop in the VIX, no problem over a, a week or two period. Uh, and, you know, you just have to hold it long enough for it to actually get back down to those levels. The, the thing you need to be careful of is that you don't put too big of a position on because the VIX can always spike higher and you got to be able to suffer some some pretty intense drawdowns if there's a few more days of intense fear in the VIX spiking up. But uh, right now, where it looks like we've got a pretty big standout spike in the VIX. If it goes even higher, that's an even bigger and better opportunity to short the VIX for a really nice uh, short play that should last uh, several weeks or a month for a significant gain. Hey, well, no doubt the ultimate short-term indicator, the VIX, right? Yeah, for sure. So... All right. So interesting times, interesting markets as always. We'll see if uh, if this time it's it for gold. My suspicion is probably not, uh, probably later on in the year. But hey, we'll know soon enough, right? Yeah, for sure. All right. So, uh, hey, what's the best way for people to connect with you on the web, Chris? Sure. Yeah, they can uh, they can follow me at thegoldandoilguy.com. And I do a daily morning video kind of recapping on what happened yesterday, what happened in overnight trading and what to expect uh, in the coming session for any open positions and new moves or breakouts to keep our eyes on. And I cover pretty much everything from gold, bonds, uh, miners, uh, whatever sectors seem to be moving, the indexes, the VIX. I cover a lot of different things, uh, typically just the things that are uh, setting up for some significant significant opportunities. Yeah, well, no doubt uh, their opportunities are always there, up markets, down markets. There's always opportunities. Hey, if you want to find out uh, more about this or got any questions, send me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feed is at kerrylutz. Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Hey, Chris, we'll check in with you in a month or so and see where the market has gone. Great. Sounds great, Kerry. Appreciate it. Trying to juggle a nine to five and recruiting is like, there's so many job boards. It's impossible to keep track of candidates and getting feedback from coworkers is like hurting. What if I told you there's a way to calm the recruitment chaos with work connect by SAP. You post once to reach multiple job boards, easily track candidates and organize coworker feedback. You'll go from to visit workconnect.io slash recruit and start your free trial today. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.